Earth. NASA says we go into space, which was basically a hoax. I have some unorthodox thoughts. Earth is flat. 500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was flat. Sorry, Neil. Try me. See if I think I have no opinion on your bullshit sci-fi fantasies. I have some unorthodox thoughts. Sci-fi fantasies. Those who are able to see beyond the shadows and lies of their culture will never be understood, let alone believed by the masses. And I'm, I'm astonished. I wonder, what country am I living in? It's not the one I grew up in. It's not, am I living in? It's not the one I grew up in. Am I living in? It's not the one I grew up in. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Uh, the pole uh, Earth rotates, and the pole bobs up and down over tens of thousands of years, and we and we oscillate like this the way a top does. Top does. Top does. Sci-fi fantasies. Top does. Top does. Top Sci-fi does. Sci-fi fantasies. We're pleased to announce the discovery of Kepler 452b, which was basically a hoax to the illiterate people of the world. Typically illiterate people of the world. Typically illiterate people of the Sci-fi world. Sci-fi fantasies. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain. But you feel it. All the things that I used to believe, I can't even believe I believe them anymore. All the things that I used to believe, I can't even believe I believe them anymore. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. Uh, it's, you know, it's like... It's like, I, it's like I just stopped believing in Santa Claus recently. Are you really somebody seeking the truth? We've been fed a lie our entire... I want to call it a lie. We've been it's fed... It's a point of view thing, I think. We've been fed a... We've been... Earth has been misrepresented to us, so we've been fed this misrepresentation of our own planet. Well, it's not actually a sphere. It's an... It's Why is that? Because... Earth is flat, perfectly flat. Wait, 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 but you gotta know, let me just so you understand, but cosmically speaking, Earth is flat, 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 flat. flat. Roger, we copy. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby's a good way, it's like pear-shaped. It's sci-fi fantasy. So, it turns out, the pear shapedness is bigger than the height of Mount Everest above sea level. The sci-fi fantasies. Sorry, Neil. Try me. See if I think I have no opinion on your bullshit sci-fi fantasies. What I know is, you know, the just total absence of the pictures of Earth from space, and and it, I still couldn't see the the forest for the trees. And we've all seen those pictures, those gorgeous pictures of a somewhat round planet. Planet Earth, my home, my place. Because the awakening, the realization of flat Earth is a big internal wave. Are you really somebody seeking the truth? Flat Earth clues, which really delves into the possibility that our human civilization is inside its own Truman type shell, like an enclosed system. Those people are not not really in the mainstream. They they must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They they would not have believed that the world was round. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Earth, Earth is, is.
flat. But why write a big secret? People are smart, they can handle it. But why write a big secret? People are smart, they can handle it. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. With this small With spacecraft, this spacecraft we, could, we could, dare I say it, change the world! <laughs> Oblate, an official is an Oblate spirit. That's what we call it. Sci-fi fantasies. Not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above you. And when we learn when that, we learn we'll that, know more we'll about, know more about, where, about where, where we came from, how we all how got, got it. Sci-fi fantasies. Ground control to Major Tom. Your circuit's dead. There's something wrong. Can you hear me, Major Tom? Can you hear me, Major Tom? Can you hear me, Major Tom? Can you... Yes. So wait, wait, wait. Do you think they're helping the cause or the movement so that they can get out from under their lies? Science. I don't understand. Just my job five days a week. NASA's approach to exploration is, um, is not Star Trek. It's not go where no man has gone before, as they say. Yes, but as a noted scientist, it didn't surprise me to tell by the demons. If you to be high, you're measuring your distance from the center of the Earth, from the very center of the Earth. Is that different from the center? I don't know. Is that different from the center? Is that different from the center? Earth is flat. Flat. But why write a big well, secret? Big People secret. are smart. They can handle it. And that couldn't be more true. It's one thing to be told of the giant impenetrable dome, but it's a whole different animal when you finally stand right next to it. Then the tough decisions have to be made. Do we keep the secret? And how far are we willing to go to keep the status quo? Once they decided to keep the secret, no expense was spared. The rapid progression of rocketry science had to be addressed quickly, and so the moon missions were created. Matt from the NASA channel was right in his thinking that you needed the moon mission event to stage a picture of the Earth from deep orbit. Humans, for the most part, don't have a clue. They don't want one or need one either. They're happy. They have to have a good being. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. It's there. Like a splinter in your mind. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue take pill, blue. the story ends, story end. you wake up in your bed and believe in whatever you want. You take the red pill, you stay in wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole is. Are you really looking for the answers no matter where they lead you? Or are you going to stay in your box? stay in your comfort zone just in case somebody might say oh well you're a flat earther aren't you me personally I don't care what people say about me all I'm offering, all I'm is, offering the truth. is the truth nothing more you got that thing when the blue marble came out. Yeah, when it first came out, it, it was, you know, the White House sent a blurb out to, in a Twitter or whatever to everybody. You know, you get this blue marble, and you look at it at first, you know, like, eh, it's, it's an improvement over some of the other blue marbles. But then somebody uh, brilliant out there decided, hey, I'm going to flip this thing upside down. And as soon as they did, this, this, the clouds are spelling sex. Yep. You know? And you're like, yep. come on. When they put out the blue marble shot, they made a point of saying, oh yeah, by the way, this is the first blue marble shot we've done in 43 years. And, 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 and the other one. Yeah, which helped the, the flat earth cause because everyone, you know, on that side was saying, you know, there are no pictures of the earth from space. There's only one that they've ever said. And people are going, no, no, that's not true. And then the White House and, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson comments on it. So, oh yeah, this is the second, 
This is the second shot from space in 43 years of going, and this doesn't bother anybody? Yes. So wait, wait, wait. Do you think they're helping the cause or the movement so that they can get out from under their lines? Do you think, you know, they're giving little clues and... Well, because they're still saying this is the real deal. Yeah. They're saying that this is, this is the ball earth. If we had any sort of moment that's akin to the uh, Apollo 8 Earthrise picture, it will change the world. And so when somebody asks me the same thing somebody asked you as far as what difference does it make, the difference is that we are living in a mental prison, first and foremost, created by people who are rich and powerful, and they're rich and powerful because they've put us all into this never-ending maze of go to work, pay your bills, pay your taxes, come home, um, watch TV, watch the news, keep up to date with what's going on in the world, and everyone is stuck in that rut. And then they're also told, here's science, and if you believe this, you're smart. You are intelligent, you're an intellectual if you believe what's in these science books. So you got a bunch of people walking around thinking they're smart, telling others who start to think of the world the way it really is that they're stupid, and it creates a, a place that's just not somewhere anybody wants to live. How much do you care what your friends and family think about you or say about you? What's more important, the way you're perceived by the world or the way you really are? And how are you really when it gets down to it? Are you really somebody seeking the truth or are you just putting up an image and only willing to get to a certain place? Planet Earth, my home, my place. But the exciting thing is that I think we will send humans in the near future to Mars. Six, five, four, three. Two, one, zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. I said something about how beautiful the space ships are. And he says, uh, yeah, it's for show. And I said, what? He says, it's for show. I said, what are you talking about? And he says, there's no space. I said, what? He said, no. It's all for a show. And he said, you cannot believe what you said. You can't always believe what you said. You can't always believe what you said. That's right. But he said, I'm getting out of it too, just as soon as I can. That's what he said to me. Because it's a bunch of hullabaloo, and I've never heard that terminology in a long time. Okay, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Oh, you're coming out of home. This is a bunch of hollow balloon. I've never heard that terminology in a long time. And they're recycling this photo, just changing up the cloud cover a little bit, and telling you that that's Earth. And 15 minutes ago, you knew that people were alone on this planet. Imagine what you'll know tomorrow. And so this is actually humanity stepping forward and saying, you know what? The mind control doesn't work anymore. And not only does the mind control not work anymore, we don't care what your media says about us anymore. We don't care what your psychologist and psychiatrist try to say.
all the facades are falling away now. There's no sign of life, boys, it's another sound. I, I really don't care if people call me a flat earther. Can you hear me now? But I do have to say that when you stack the evidence up, the globe really starts to disappear, and the globe just simply doesn't hold water. The globe just simply doesn't hold water. That's why Rob Schema, he has done literally months and months and months of investigation into the flat earth. And he can't get out of the whole rabbit hole. Because once you start to uncover one layer of the onion, you realize it really goes so deep. It really goes so deep. I think you're batshit crazy with this new theory that everybody keeps coming out with, with the flat earth theory. I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, but I, I, I can't believe that anybody would think that. You know, what makes you think that the earth is flat? When I've been in airy class loads of times and looked down and I can see it. Flat Earth, in my opinion, is a topic that takes serious research and you have to disconnect yourself from everything you thought you knew and all of your religious beliefs and everything like that and really approach this from a scientific perspective, but not a pseudo-scientific perspective, not a perspective of coming from textbook information, but coming from a place and a perspective that you're actually out there using tools of technology to really try to understand what is this world that we're actually living on is it a dome is it a big ball floating through space is it a hologram see many people would agree that it's a hologram 
but then they can't take it a step further and say, well, you know what? If it's a hologram, it's probably not really three-dimensional like we believe it is. A hologram can look three-dimensional, but it's actually just a projection. So if this whole world is a hologram, the whole universe for that matter, that's what mainstream scientists are saying. Now, mainstream scientists say a lot of things that are not actually accurate, so you take that for what it's worth. But they're saying that it's a holographic universe and they've actually found zeros and ones within the fabric of space-time itself. That tells me that we're living in a matrix. The matrix has to be housed somewhere. It's housed in the dome that is our world. And I've often likened the enclosed world theory to a video game. You can look outside of a window in a video game and stare into the vastness of the world that's outside. But if you can hack the video game and actually get behind the wall where the supposed window is, it's nothing but empty space. Because the programmers didn't program anything outside of those borders. All they programmed was what your avatar can perceive while playing through the well-constructed areas of the video game. Is our world actually the same? What's beyond the ice wall? Those are the questions that we're really trying to get to the bottom of. But in order to get to the bottom of those questions, we have to first do our own experimentation. We have to first investigate for ourselves. We have to use our own eyes and our own ears. Now, I know that's so scary to everybody out there. No, don't make me use my own eyes and my own ears. I want to trust what these people have written in a book and have told me is true because I don't want to actually believe my own senses. See, when you phrase it like that, do you, do you realize how ridiculous that sounds? In some respects, in some terms. Page one story. Um, yeah, well, but we do suck in some respects, in some terms. Christoph, why do you think that Truman has never come close to discovering the true nature of his world? We accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. It's as simple as that. It's okay if they give us a picture of Pluto that was supposedly taken with this high-powered satellite that was passing by that just happens to have the silhouette of the pl a dog Pluto from the Disney, from, from Walt Disney, from the Disney cartoon Pluto. 
I don't even have the words to describe the fraud that is taking place here. Like, who is that stupid to believe that the planet Pluto actually just coincidentally has a landmass on it that looks identical to the Walt Disney character Pluto? A lot of these images that you get and a lot of these um, pictures are nothing more than that. They're just pictures, they're CGI, they're computer graphics, and, you know, I can understand why in the 70s or 80s this might have been uh, something that was hard for people to understand, but in today's world, we all have computers with pretty impressive graphic capabilities on our desks at home. And uh, you can actually just play with a paint program and get pretty, uh, pretty similar results to what NASA shows you. Uh, same thing with the Pluto pictures that just recently came back. Same thing with these pictures of Mars. Uh, these things are, are meant to um, give you a fantasy world uh, and take you away from where you actually live and what's actually important, which is right here. You know, we don't need another place to go. We don't need a place to inhabit like Mars. We should worry about all the issues and the problems that are here. And then once we've mastered this, well, then go ahead and look out there if you want. But uh, I think we're jumping the gun a little bit by uh, talking about inhabiting Mars. Why is it that right after the Antarctic Treaty was signed, nobody was allowed to go to Antarctica after that, and then they actually did a high-altitude nuclear test called Operation Fish Bowl once they realized where the dome actually was? Planet Earth. My home. My place. And from there, it's just been, uh, like you said, down the rabbit hole. Uh, I think it helps explain almost everything. Uh, it just made everything clear, made um, me feel more free, made us feel more free, uh, gave us a better connection with the infinite. Um, and I think that it really just started with opening our minds uh, and really no, no longer taking, like you said, into account what other people think, which is the least important thing that there is. And if you were going to fool somebody, uh, probably a good thing to do would be to get a bunch of people with you uh, to laugh at that person if they uh, thought a certain way. And that's exactly what's happened in today's world is there's certain topics that if you bring up, you will be laughed at and be told you're an idiot. If you think that the moon landing was a hoax, if you think that 9-11 was your government, if you think the earth is flat, uh, you're an idiot. So if you start looking a little deeper into why is it that there's certain topics you can't talk about? You might be surprised at the end of that tunnel. Right, right. And it makes you wonder, what is the purpose of this cover-up? Go ahead, Truth. Well, I was just going to say, yeah, there's sacred cows that you just do not touch. And if you do, then you're forever known as a kook or a crazy person. It completely destroys everything that everyone knows. It's just a fantastical mythological uh, idea that we've all been taught is true and I understand it breaks down you know, it takes a while to, to, to accept it and to really break it down and it'll never be something that you can just tell somebody and they'll go oh yeah that makes sense now uh, they will they're gonna cuss at you and they're gonna tell you you're wrong but just putting that seed in their mind I think is the key over the next week two weeks three weeks People will start to see the world differently and it will start to register with them that, uh oh, there is a chance that there's a reason why there's a globe in every kindergarten classroom. You know what I found odd though is during this enlightening or awakening and realizing um, that the earth is most likely flat. But uh, I, I, I think the enclosed theory makes a lot more sense than anything else. But when I first started to talk about this, most of our listeners wrote very, very positive emails. Everybody was on board going, you know what, I've been looking into this, I've been feeling this, there has been this great awakening, and it seemed to have started, at least for me and the people around me, around January or February of this year.
um, as a child, not having any brainwashing whatsoever, I couldn't make any sense of it. The only thing that didn't make sense to me as a kid, and I can still remember this to this day, I never understood the spinning. And I would question it in, you know, second grade and get told I was, you know, I was confused or I didn't understand the way it worked. And I would stare at the moon or stare at the sun and just say, I don't understand what they mean by we are spinning. It didn't make any sense. Still to this day, it doesn't make any sense. There is one bit of spinning footage from NASA, a 12 hour time lapse, but it doesn't show the clouds moving, which is very odd because clouds don't stay still for 12 hours. So we haven't got any footage of the Earth spinning, even though there's the Hubble telescope, we're told, uh, a space station and 20 to 30,000 satellites. Very strange. No one can feel the spin. Feel earthquakes pretty well. You can't feel the earth spinning. There is not life on the one hand and you on the other. It's all the same. But you see, you can't tell people that. And just by telling, get them to see it. it just in, in exactly this way, you, the people who know that the Earth is flat can't be reasoned with. People who believe that the Bible is the literal word of God, absolutely impossible to reason with them at all, because they know it is so. So in the same way, we tend to know that we are all separate poor little means, and that we are in need of salvation or something. And we know this and so, and so somebody says, well, you are not really that. You know that that feeling of separateness is an illusion. Well, it's all very nice in theory, but I don't feel it. So what will you do? What will you do with a person who is convinced that the earth is flat? No way of reasoning with him. If it's for some reason important that he discovers that the earth is round, you've got to play a game with him. You've got to play a trick on him. You tell him, great, the earth is flat. Let's go and look over the edge. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was definitely an e-ticket.